welcome my Capricorn Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your seven card draw. What do I need read for this full moon to new moon, March, uh, February into March 2022? I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons. Now, for short, professional itch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a professional which available on Kindle. Link in the description box. Uh, creator on Patreon, uh, patreon.com uh, slash drawing the circle, the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions. But you can call me now. Hey. Hello, fellow Earth signs, Virgo that I am, uh, ready to rock and roll and get this uh, shadow read uh, to you if you are new to uh, my channel. Uh, seven card draws, just one card from seven different decks, getting you clues, tips, and hints about a specific astrological timeline, a waning moon from full to new. And let's look at that. The full moon in Leo goes void, of course, at the same time that it uh, uh, turns full on Wednesday, February 16th, 11.56 a.m. Eastern Time. I am in New York tomorrow, <laughs> essentially, at the time of this recording. But then we are looking at the shadow work. The waning, the releasing, the letting go, the forgiving, the alchemy, the transformation to the new moon in Pisces, Wednesday, uh, March 2nd, 7.52 p.m. So, uh, keep an eye on that new moon, because the three days before new moon is dark moon. It's balsamic moon. I didn't create that. <laughs> it's just how it is. It's what it's called. Uh, the darkest before the dawn of the new moon, you could say. So we're looking at uh, a dark moon in Aquarius for sure, but I have a feeling there's going to be a, a little gap in there where it's dark moon in Pisces before um, before it goes new. And that can be exceedingly empathic considering Pisces is the 12th house, the collective unconscious, right? All that unconscious stuff in the... So uh, if you're an empath... You might want to get ready, just saying. Uh, that being said, it is a general read. Please take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs to get more information about the situation we're about to spread out here. Or maybe another one, because we all have more than one situation going on in our lives. Other than that, both feet on the floor. If you can, stay grounded. Right? Focus on your breath, if you will. I will do the same. To get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can from the divine through my intuitive skills, these pieces of cardboard and YouTube to you. Please take a nice deep breath. And let's do this. <laughs> That's better. Try not to get the clipboard to jiggle when I do that. As I call upon, here we go, the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of the general assembly, higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra, and above the spirit animals and totems, as well as the pantheon of all pantheons for the Capricorn Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, watching this video, receiving this reading, and cross watchers. Please, what is the archetype in the eighth chakra, symbolic of the soul lesson being learned here, the alchemy from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, indication of the shadow work for them, the Capricorns, this full to new. The dilettante. I mean, I like the dilettante archetype. It's usually uh, uh, used in the negative, but all archetypes are neutral, and you can have an archetype for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. The creative family of archetypes, there are nine. The creativity family is one of them. Uh, so I, I, I actually love the light side of this one. I have a touch of it myself, reason, season, or lifetime. This one tends to come and go. The shadow attribute, uh, pretension, too much deeper knowledge than you actually possess. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm so straight up with that stuff now because nothing ever goes well. Right? You always get busted or then, you know, you take things into your own hands and it doesn't go well. Ask for help, right? But the light, I think you'll get why I love this one. Uh, light attribute. Delights in the arts without having to be a professional. Right? For, like, for, like divinatory arts. People just read their own cards and their friends, but they're not charging for it, or they're just kind of loving it. And they're dabbler is another word for dilettante in a way. Um, but I'm like that with cooking. I love cooking. 
I don't want to be a chef. I don't, I don't want to go to culinary school and work in a restaurant. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just not built for that. But that doesn't mean I don't enjoy uh, cooking. I'm a potion witch. My sauces, my stews, all of that stuff. My cocktails are absolutely stellar, darling. Alerts you to the dangers of becoming superficial in your pursuits, right? Not, not a Capricorn thing, really. Superficiality, I mean, maybe in some aspects, certainly. Uh, it could be that way. Uh, but I don't really think the word superficial doesn't immediately come to mind when I hear the name, the word Capricorn. So, that's the eighth chakra. That affects the electromagnetic field of your entire energy system, right? <laughs> kind of sets the program that all the other chakras respond to. What you attract, what you repel, what rises within you or outside of you, so to speak. So let's look at those next four chakras down. The crown, the third eye, the throat, and the heart. To get some clarity here uh, of what's going on on the inside world. The feminine energy, Daughters of the Moon Tarot, Feminist Deck. Uh, uh, because this is really where the shadow work tends to go down first, right? I mean, the lower three chakras, I guess, but it's really the choice to, like, feel what you need to feel and face what you need to face. Breathe. Hmm. As I call upon my goddesses of Earth, the sign of Capricorn powers of the north please leave the card in my hand daughters of the moon tarot what's going on heart third third eye crown for the capricorn collective sun moon rising venus i'm watching this video receiving this reading helping them to do the alchemy with the dilettante two pentacles good earth uh an internal balance a juggling this is inside of yourself but i take it that when someone gets a pentacle in the inside world it's about wisdom it's like they're, they're having an experience of something in the outside world that has taken a thought, knowledge that they got, and they turned it into experience. Uh, uh, knowledge, plus, sorry, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom, right? It's not wisdom until you put the pedal to the metal, right? Until you take the action. So there might be a juggling back and forth here, certainly, about, well, I don't know, not so much indecision, but really that thing of trying to find one's balance, perhaps in something new, something that, you know, you're dabbling in, dipping toes in, but the creative part of it, if there really is no monetization, I guess that's the word we're using now for that, you know, of course there's time, there's energy, there's stuff you put into it, but in a general read, this is too general. This could be about anything. So let's keep going. Uh, the mythic tarot will give us the lower three chakras, the masculine, the outside world. Looking at you from the outside in, maybe you from the inside looking out, often it's both of those things holographically if there's that kind of mirror in place, so to speak. Uh, but lower three chakras is also about relationships, root chakra, tribes, groups, societies. Oh my god, so many different, <laughs> so many different tribes. You, once you start to really investigate how many tribes you are in, you're shocked by how many of them there are, your genetic lineage, right? You know, uh, I was a member of the Bad Reputation Nation. Jump Jet and the Black Hearts, right? That's a tribe, right? So, second chakra, one-on-one -on -one relationships, your relationship to another person or thing. Uh, and solar plexus, your relationship to yourself, your honor code, what you will, what you want, what you do, what you don't, your boundaries, your self-esteem, all of that. Let's see what hits the table. Breathe. So I call upon my gods of Earth, the sign of Capricorn powers of the North. Please, one card in clarity for the Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, watching this video. Receiving this reading or cross-watcher. What's going on in the lower three chakras? Masculine dynamic with the mythic tarot. Please leave the card in my hand. Dilettante in the eighth. Two of pentacles on the inner. Is that one card or two? That feels like two. And it is. <laughs> that tells me that's not the right card. Please leave the card in my hand uh, for the Capricorns. That piece of guidance and grace for this full to new temperance another card of balance <laughs> so there i wouldn't call that a straight up double whammy but with only two tarot cards in the seven card draw i would say that there's going to take some time there's going to take some patience 
really uh, look into the meaning of the word of uh, tempering, T-E-M-P-E-R-I-N-G. Tempering metal is a brutal process. Uh, tempering eggs, however, not so much. If you've ever tried to make like hollandaise or something where you had to slowly warm the egg, right, with a warmer liquid so that it didn't scramble. Curdle is the word. I told you, right? It's like, I'm a cook. I'm not a chef. I know how to temper, right? Just gently, gently, slowly, slowly. That's why I get nor mixes, honestly. <laughs> Just give me a mix. I don't care. Um, but temperance, like alchemy, like shadow work, takes time, takes pressure, and it takes heat. But that heat can certainly be uh, a passion, right? Uh, a desire, that element of fire. Um, certainly there's a healing on the table here. In terms of shadow work, though, finding your balance to then grab the bull by the horns. The bull leapers. Two of Pentacles. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. I'm not seeing a huge amount of action here, by the way. But, um, I do get that balancing, right, as well as, uh, the harmonizing, the healing. Maybe bringing things, um... Uh, into a more um, permanent balance for now in your life. Eh, let's keep going. Let's see. We're going to get you um, a healing mantra from the Matt Kahn Healing Mantra Deck, one of three bookie book reads. Uh, to help here, breathe. Hmm. So I call upon the Ascended Masters of the General Assembly. This could be about anything. Please, one card in clarity for the Capricorn Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, watching this video. Receiving this uh, reading. What is the perfect healing mantra to help them heal? Uh, this shadow work to help them find the hidden blessing, the gold within the lead of the dilettante. Two of Pentacles on the inner, which could be, it does feel not like the indecision, but really like feeling the value of it as well. What's the value of that? What's the value? More evaluation than indecision. Uh, and with that temperance card, it's not that things are put on pause. It's just, it's going to take time here. There is a, a thing of patience for healing here. This is probably not a once and done, like brushing your teeth, right? You just, oh yeah, I did it once and it was great, you know? No. There are certain things that every day we have to do. So what's the perfect healing mantra for them, please? This full moon to new, January, Feb. Sorry, why do I keep doing that? March, February, March, 2022. Uh, liberating love. I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give. This now feels very much like a self-care thing, right? The dilettante may not know exactly what to do, but you know you're interested. All right, self-care. Look, it's more than manicure, pedicure, facial massage. If that's all it took, oh, honey, I would have been an ascended master as a teenager. No, no, it, it does take time. Every day is a winding road, but we get a little bit closer. Right? So to liberate love is really about bringing your heart into balance. We'll, I'm going to read it from the bookie book, like I said. Um, but particularly if you are service-oriented, as am I, I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give. Because I want every reading I do to be the best thing I've ever done. Not the best thing I'll ever do. As an artist, it's very fulfilling. But it is the helping others. Why do people go to the witch? Right? And most of the time, it's to get their wish fulfilled, right? It's not all uh, fairy godmother stuff there. Um, but you have to come to the witch, right? And it does take time. And anybody who offers you an instant manifestation of something, sometimes instant manifestation isn't fast enough. I understand that. But for Capricorns, it, it very much feels up your alley here right now to really, and I'm going to read it from the bookie book, to give yourself, like, think of all the fulfillment that you've given people throughout the years, family, friends, lovers, whatever, work, right? To be willing, right? I allow, I think that's the key word, I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give, hence liberating love. Let me read it to you. I opened right to it. It's always a sign. I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give. When love is liberated, 
your heart remains open to all the gifts that life has to offer. As love is liberated from the emotional wounds of the human condition, it becomes easy to accept, to forgive, and receive. Not the easiest thing in the world, but forgiveness is the F word and essential in shadow work. But, you know, it depends on the version you were raised with. Really, seriously, look into Course in Miracles, quantum forgiveness, things based on quantum physics, not Newtonian physics. I understand why people don't want to forgive and say that forgiveness is toxic. Yeah, the old version it is, because it's based on Newton. <laughs> Subject and object do not have anything to do with each other. But in the quantum, no, it's a totally different ballgame. Course in Miracles is how I found it, but there are other ways. You do you. Uh, it is simply a sign that you're... Uh, blah, 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 sorry, I think. When such, such acts, actions seem exhausting, like forgiving, right? When it seems exhausting, it is simply a sign that your heart doesn't feel safe enough to remain open. But that's an important thing. That's a form of intuition. No, my heart's not open to this right now. I don't want to... Uh, I'd, I'd rather drive a rusty spike through their heads than forgive them, right? I get it. I'm, I'm an earth sign. I, I get that pretty viscerally. But I know that a chain around them is just a chain around me. Mm, fuck. Um, when this occurs, your will's freedom to embrace each tender corner of your consciousness will allow opening up to resume. When the heart has permission to open, your love is liberated, and you can shine a light into all levels of reality to awaken to the truth of all. This is absolutely about self-care. No one else can do this part but you, for you. It doesn't mean you can't ask for help. You absolutely can ask for help. You're doing it right now, but essentially, by watching a reading anywhere, or getting a reading. Uh, this mantra is ideal for learning how to believe in yourself, which everybody needs help with that, except some people. Uh, promoting self-realization. Now, play with that word, self-realization. There are a couple of different ways to interpret that phrase, as I have felt over the years. To realize oneself, right? To, real, to make real, to realize essentially means to make something real. That's an interesting way to look at it. And integrating the shadow. OG, oh, really? In a shadow raid? The shadow work may not be easy, but it's a question of time versus intensity. Do you want to rip off the band-aid all at once? That's intensity. Or do you want to do it one hair at a time? Which takes time. Liberate love. You take care of that heart of yours. And of course, no one should forgive if their heart's not into it. But understand <laughs> that the one who ultimately suffers from unforgiveness is the one who's holding on to the unforgiveness. But it is a journey. Just because you can't forgive right away doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It's a process. It's called a slow burn forgiveness lesson. That's what this could be. Can you dabble in the creative arts? Can you dabble in the healing arts, right? What is that dilettante about? Just don't pretend to know more than you do. You're going to shut doors that are opening to you because you think you know. And I've done it plenty. By the way, everybody does. Come on. Come on. Come on. So uh, let's get a whisper of love on the table. Whisper of love, Oracle, the voices of the higher selves of all involved. Breathe. Feels like a very solid reading, though. Like, that two of pentacles on the inside is good. Like, that's like, okay. I mean, you're not at the ace of this, but you're not at the ten. That, too, is a good kind of juggly place trying to find your balance, and it certainly lines up with that temperance card. Breathe. As I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, please, what is the whisper of love? For the Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the dilettante, Two of Pentacles on the Inner, Temperance on the Outer, liberating love, this uh, full to new. Spend some quality time together. Now it's a soul contract read. <laughs> well, unless this is spending quality time with your heart. I know it feels like lonely time, alone time, but let me read this to you. 
It is imperative, 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 exclamation point comes after an imperative. It is imperative that we spend quality time with those we are in significant relationship with, listening and talking to each other. So it depends on your definition of who is significant in your life. But like I said, there's something very slow and steady with this temperance card here. But that has to do with you receiving the fulfillment you're willing to give. This could be your relationship with the shadow, your emotional baggage, your unhealed pain, your shadow self, I mean, so, the inner child. Right? There's so many ways to approach this. And, you know, that's what I mean. Creatively, just kind of go with it, but don't pretend to know more than you do. Now, spending quality time together with somebody could also mean a counselor, a therapist, a confidential connection where you can communicate, right? In the vault, right? Everything goes in the vault. The code of silence, Maxwell Smart, right? Um, to have the safety to really do this. And understand, this temperance card lights up the rest of the spread. It just does. I mean, your healing can be delayed, but not prevented. And certainly the ability for the dilettante to delay is high, right? No, I remember I worked for somebody, a spiritual whatever, muckety-muck. I said to them, this is many years ago, I said, well, why don't you try inner child work? And it feels like a lot of this stuff goes back to your childhood. And she said, oh, I already did all the inner child work. The shield went up. <laughs> like That's not like automatically. Oh, okay. I'll be behind the splash guard eating popcorn for this one. And sure enough, there was a meltdown. God, I wasn't around for it at the time, right? So, you know, and that's the thing. Your healing can be delayed but not prevented. And do you want to wait until the next life to do it? You could do this now. That thing of forgiveness, though, I think might be key here. And, you know, forgiveness was easy. We'd have been in Nirvana thousands of years ago. Yeah, the band. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> State of being. Aww. So if you're going to do the shadow work, don't you want a spirit animal or a totem helping you out? It's what they do, right? In my, in my darkest hours, it's the felines that come to me. Granted, I live with three male black cats. My son, Sebastian, Balthazar, and Melchior. It's like living in a Tex Avery cartoon most days, but their love and their compassion, they really are manifestations of the feline uh, totem that I have, the lion. Duh. Breathe. Hmm. As I call to the spirit animals and totems for the Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, watching this video, receiving this reading, please. What is the Divine Animals Oracle? I'm Stacy DeMarco here. Who walks with them? Who flies with them? Who swims with them? Who crawls with them? Helping them with guidance, grace, protection, love, wisdom, and power. For the shadow work of the dilettante, <clears throat> two of pentacles on the inner temperance, on the outer, liberating love and spending quality time with someone in some way. This, uh... This full to new could be spend time with the totem, and it's the dog! Arrgh! <sighs> um, the dog companionship. This is a soul contract right now. Sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't come out until the end. Uh, it's such a pretty thing. There's a hunter. I don't know, you probably can't see. It's a beautiful deck. A Blue Angel Publishing is amazing. If I was going to make a deck, I would ask them to do it. Like for them to ask me to do one, whatever. <coughs> um, but it is a dog, right? Sitting by an archer. <laughs> the, Don't worry, gotcha. <laughs> I miss doggies. I grew up with the Newfoundlands and Afghan hounds, and now my family's got Labradoodles. It's quite a left turn at Albuquerque. Uh, you know, hypoallergenic and just batshit. Uh, card number 41. I love my. They're in my family. <laughs> They're not pets. They're my mother's dogs. Therefore, they are my brothers. It's just how it works. Don't ask. 
Don't ask. We've always had animals. Remember there was a nursery school. We had an Angora bunny hopping around the house. The cats had no idea what they... Hey, it's, it's a slipper that hops. Breathe. From the bookie book, uh, card number 41. Dog. Companionship. Be a firm and ethical friend. Seek loyalty and honesty in your relationships. Our friendship should be supportive, not competitive. All right, looking at this, the only thing that really hits that is that spend quality time together. But I think that might be really about making sure that, um, that there is loyalty and honesty and safety should you uh, need someone to talk to about this stuff. There is a difference between solitude and loneliness. Work. Work. So true. So, something hidden will be illuminated. We all have aspects of ourselves that we do not appreciate or like. Learn to change these things if they do not benefit us or lovingly. Accept them like a dog will. Dog won't care. Dog won't care. It's like, you smell funny. I love you. Right? Not like cats. Gee, which one do you think I am with the last name like lions? <laughs> okay, dog magic. I just read the beginning and the end. Dog magic is loving and warm and protective. It feels like that's the environment you need uh, with people that you're going to companion with here. If you are feeling lonely or you wish to attract good, loyal friends, you can call upon dog energy to help. If you have been betrayed by someone or you feel mistrusted, call upon this energy to heal you. Work work. There's such totems of loyalty. There's a difference between a spirit animal and a totem. We're not going to have that conversation, but certainly the, the just the general spirit of a dog. Once they like you, right, if you are their skin mama, if they're fur babies, does that make a skin mama? I don't know how that works. Uh, somebody look that up. Google it and get back to me. Uh, I, I just got to say that this is really, really lovely. Now, this could also be spend some quality time with your dog, which I completely understand. Completely understand. And I will say that the time that I do spend with my boys, with my, my three little mini panthers, um, it is quality. Goofy. Yeah, I got us. I have a water spritzer, but it doesn't go straight at them. It goes like this. It's just the sound so they don't get wet. Because <laughs> I don't want to traumatize my boys. Um, but when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm feeling down, they're there. They're there for me with big head bonkies. Bunting, I think it's called. Remember I said there was a hidden blessing? <laughs> there was some gold in this lead here. Right? Well, this is what this last card is about. Uh, the Blessed Bee Deck by Lucy Cavendish, our third and final bookie book read. Uh, the Mystical Kelting Blessing Cards to Rich and Empower by Lucy Cavendish. Let's see what the gold is within this lead that should you do um, uh, the shadow work in any way. This is already in there. You just got to alchemize it from lead to gold. Breathe. Yeah, from curse to blessing. Yeah, it's the same thing. My guide said to me a couple of years ago, oh, please, what do you know from a blessing or a curse? You think it's a blessing that bites you in the ass? You think it's a curse and it's the best thing that ever happened? Location, location, location. Breathe. Hmm. And then I call upon the pantheon of all pantheons, all lineages, cultures, and traditions. For the Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, what is the hidden blessing uh, to the shadow work here? Alchemizing the dilettante into delighting in the arts without having to be a professional, uh, alerting them to the danger of becoming superficial in their pursuits with that two of pentacles juggling in the back, forth, back and forth, finding their balance, finding their internal footing, maybe to move forward into the three. <clears throat> with that temperance on the outside, there is a healing thing in place here. It is going to take time. It is going to take patience. But again, balance is emphasized there. And for them to liberate love, to allow themselves to receive the fulfillment that they are oh so willing to give, <clears throat> right? Fulfillment to projects, fulfillment to career, fulfillment to family, 
to allow yourself maybe to spend some quality time together with a companion of some kind, right? Listening to and talking to and allowing themselves to receive some of that stuff, uh, that fulfillment that they're so willing to give with that loyalty to themselves. What's the hidden blessing in the shadow work here, this full to new for my Capricorns? A blessing on your family. There we go. There we go. Now, family, like I said, with the tribes, not always necessarily instantly genetic family, right? Not everybody's good with their genetic family. Not everybody knows who their genetic family is. And that's it's written into the script before you ever incarnate. It doesn't mean it's that's harder or it's easier. It's just the truth. And this is a long one, well, it would be. Right? Nice fourth, fourth house energy. Oh, and look, she got a baby umicorn. Baby umicorn. Oh, they're cute. Except, mm, unicorns, a couple of tons of raw muscle with a deadly weapon on its head. Terry Pratchett, lords and ladies, read the book. Breathe. Because we do the blessings for real here on Drawing the Circles YouTube page and elsewhere. Breathe. Use me, Pantheons of the Divine. It's a long one. Card number 15. A blessing on your family. A blessing to bring to those who are most closely connected with. Is that, was that written right? A blessing to bring, oh, a blessing to bring to those who you are most closely connected with, to invoke the healing powers of relationship where love is the motivating force that binds each to the other. Seems right on target. <clears throat> when blood sings to blood, even across the miles, we hear its call. There are families who are estranged from the other, for they gaze upon each other as strangers, unalike, unfathomable in their personal differences. Yet, when we begin to unravel the mystery of family, we may find a place in our life where we begin to grow close again, usually after tragedy and sadness. Happens. May you see reflected in your eyes the light that shone in those that gazed down upon you as a child. A flame of courage that can be lit from within. Feel within you the unyielding strength of the family members who have traveled the world in search of safe harbor for you, their descendants. They're talking about your ancestors here to an extent probably a large extent. However, however, your family has formed itself scattered across vast distances with interests and people and careers that seem incompatible and incredible to have sprung from the same tree. May the roots of the family now become clear to you. May you discern the strong bonds and may the closeness of the blood give you qualities to draw upon. <clears throat> That's interesting. May there be gatherings where you begin to feel the truth of the kinship you share, and may each of you be there for each other when needy times come, as they do to us all. May there be affection, warmth, understanding of who you have been, an interest always in who you are becoming, an acceptance of who you will be. May your family always be gentle to you and provide a place to sleep and be nourished when all else about you seems cold and without kindness. May family see the very best in you and draw it out and cheer you on as you make your way through the world. May your family heal over time, for all families have their stumbling places where we falter and do not do our best. 
May there be blessings of warm arms around you, cheers for your successes, restoration when you are weary, and acceptance when you feel you are unlike anything else in this world. May the love of family bring back to you the trust of the universe. Oh, that feels good. A loving place where you can say, this is who I have come from. These are the people who know me best. This is who I will care for and who will care for me in return. And if this family is not found in blood, uh, may it be found in the relationships between those you are, who are soul family to you. And may the bonds deepen and last and hold you all one to the other all the days of this beautiful and mysterious life. For the well-being of all, and with harm to none, as we will it, so let it be done. So let it be. So it is. Interesting read. Gentler than ones I've seen so far, right? So, <coughs> that dilettant, get dilettant, get creative, get dabble, get dabbling, but be aware if you're being too superficial, find the balance of that, because this is going to take times, so obviously about finding fulfillment, giving, allowing yourself the fulfillment maybe of your families, your soul families, your circles, your friends, spending quality time together, talking to and listening to, in companionship with a blessing on your family, literal, symbolic, probably both soul family. It really does make sense here. And it does feel sedate, and it does feel stable, and it doesn't feel wild, crazy, out of control. So take your time with the temperance, and I do really recommend looking up other definitions of the word tempering or temperance. There's the temperance movement. I think you'll get a lot out of it. And certainly, if you would like to go into this in a private reading, there is a video in the description box for here on YouTube called Booking a Reading with Mel. Explains the process before, during, and after, just so that you're prepared. Makes it easier for everybody, myself included. <coughs> and certainly, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. All right, help the other Capricorns find it. And if you want more of me here on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'm putting out these readings when they're done. I'm not whipping myself. I'm not pushing myself. I took myself off uh, the YouTube treadmill. Why? Because I am over on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Drawing the Circle Productions. I got humans. I got heroes. I got witches. I got immortals. I got gods and goddesses over there. And we're having a really good time. Check it out. Otherwise, wishing you all the very best in this very blessed of what feels like a very warm companioning, but possibly tricky, depending on your families there. Uh, shadow work for full two new Febmar two two hail. Farewell and blessed, blessed be.